Hello and welcome to TidyX episode 184, TidyX screencast, where we go through and explain how our code works. My name's Ellis Hughes. And my name's Patrick Ward. Thanks for checking in with us at episode 184. Last week, we teased a bit of the per package by doing some group uh, strata based regression. Um, this week, we're going to delve more into the per package with an intro to map functions to kind of show how they work, the sort of basic uh, uh, 101 level, this is what you can do with map. And um, many people will probably watch it and say, well, why don't you just keep the data in a data frame and do group by and then do all the things that you wanna do. And um, it's important to realize that the data is only in a data frame because we got it that way. Oftentimes data doesn't come in in that way. It comes in from, APIs and JSON files. It might come in from some web scraping where we have lists of elements that are storing different values. And we need to be able to write functions or operations that can take that list and turn it into something consumable more downstream. So map we are over all the values. Ah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So we're going to intro the per package um, with, with map functions today, and then we'll go into something more complex and real world uh, next week. Yep. As always, YouTube channel, questions, comments down below if there's something you'd like to see. Uh, but let's jump into the per package. All right, let's do this. So we're going to use library tidyverse for our various data manipulation needs. Per is part of the tidyverse, if you didn't already know that. So it gets loaded when we call library tidyverse. Now the data that we're gonna be using today is Palmer penguins. We're using that again because we want to focus on how do you use these functions, not let's show you this really complex use case. We're gonna do that next week. So we're gonna load Palmer penguins here and that's going to give us our penguins data set. And we're gonna just assign that to D so that we don't have to write penguins a whole bunch of times here. If you take a look at the data set, it's got a bunch of different columns like species, island, bill length, bill um, depth, depth bill, flipper yeah. length, flip, uh, body mass, sex, and year that they collected that data. So it's a uh, relative, it's a pretty rich data set. Again, we're not particularly caring about the data set. We want to talk about how do you actually use these functions. So we're going to turn this data set into a list that we will be mapping over by using the split function and say split by island. And so that'll give us a list where one is for the Torgerson, one is for the Bisco, and one is for the, let's just do a quick look here. We can do names on D list. Bisco, Dream, and Torgerson uh, mm -hmm. islands there. So normally we've, we've done episodes talking about the various different types of uh, objects that exist in R. One of the basic object types is a list. A list is really nice because it is, you have a bunch of different indices in the object and the contents of that index can be whatever you want it to be. There's no uh, requirement that it be anything other than just a valid object type. Uh, you can access the contents uh, of that list. So the index of that list using either the square braces to pull out the index of that list still as a list itself. So if, uh, you see here this dollar sign that is indicating that this is still technically a list. You can also use the double square braces here to get the actual index and pull that out. So if you do that, you notice that this is just a tibble. Here, this was a tibble, but it was still contained within a list element there. You can also access this, and this is very similar. This is identical to the double square brace is the dollar sign. And this is pulling explicitly that value out. And so there's nice things about lists where they can be named or not named. Um, because we did the split on island, it is named. So we are able to do this. But if it's an unnamed list, you have to access contents via their index. And R is based one. So the first index is one, unlike Python, which is zero based in a lot of other programming languages. I'm not going to get into any arguments about that. <laughs> uh, but how do you actually work with this now that it is a list? Let's pretend that we pulled in the data from uh, some API and they, they just dumped the data at us at a list, uh, as a list. And we want to now map over all the different elements and calculate various different things. 
So per provides a bunch of different functions to work with lists. That's that's his intent to work with lists. Um, and the basic function that you use from per is called map. Patrick, how are the different ways that we can use map? Or what yeah, are the different so, ways? Yeah, map uh, aptly named. It means we want to map a function over a set of lists. So um, the basic kind of uh, standard fare here is that you feed map a dot X list and you feed it a dot F function. Uh, the first example there on line 28, we're just asking for how long each of the data frames are. And, and again, this could be different, you know, data frames. It could be totally different data in each of these list data frames. All we're asking here is what number of, uh, how many number of rows or how many observations are there for each of the different list data frames. And this is a rather ambiguous way to do things because you're simply passing in the uh, function directly and uh, there's nothing else uh, explicit about this. Uh, the second version there on line 30 is usually the way that I would do this, which is with a tilde, you pass it the function and then inside of the parentheses of that function, you pass dot X and dot X is saying, hey, go back to whatever you put in for dot X, which in this case is D underscore list and do the end row of each of those data frames. Other ways you could con you complete the same task would be with an anonymous function. So, um, you know, it'd be kind of overkill typing wise to do this one on line 32 right now. Usually where you would do this is if you were going to write some sort of custom function that maybe wasn't available in R, um, like my custom function. Yeah, exactly. And maybe that does something like, you know, takes the square root of every n row of the list, right? So something like that, whatever. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, it, it's, it's valuable too. Um, if this function isn't inherently able to be passed like this, where you can just pass an index to it and go, all right, here. Or if you need to do like multiple transformations. So if you have like your function here, and then you want to do some sort of like, this is some value. Yep. And then you, oh, and then you want to pull out then the value, my actual value I care about. Yeah. Yeah. So in this so situation. You, yeah. You, you can either do it in there or you could write the, write that explicit function outside of the map and then pass it in the same way we did in line 30. It just depends on how much code you want to write and how you want it to look. Uh, but that, that's a, an anonymous function. And then a more modern anonymous function, anything from R 4.1 or greater is to just use the backslash X and row. Uh, but we're not going to use that going forward just because some people don't, um, you know, might not have 4.1 or greater loaded. Uh, so, you know, a lot of people still don't know about the backslash. Um, I really don't use it. I tend to use function more uh, just because it's like, makes sense to me, but uh, uh, yeah. So all four of those though, they're going to create the exact same output. Yeah, just just um, for proof, just for proof. Okay. There you go. Here's the NRow output. Here's the, the fun or excuse me, the backslash anonymous function, the explicit anonymous function, the tilde expansion, and the, just the function and rows, you see none of the values changed here. It's just this bit at the top here that, uh, that changed for us. I'll do the same thing. Um, and so this applies to like really any type of function that you want to use. So in this case, we're going to, um, take that D list and the function here is going to be, Hey, let's take the mean of all the bill lengths. And if there's any, um, uh, missing values, just go ahead and drop them. So again, if we kick this out, uh, we get the results turned back to us as a return back to us as a list, because that's what we're dealing with. But map does give us other options here. So the map underscore star is going to give us um, a variety of different options that we can ask map. Look at all those. We can ask map to return things back like a vector or in this case, a double. So this will be like a named vector where each of the um, uh, islands will get returned with their mean value for bill length. So that's a nice way to see it. We could have changed it to map underscore vec and gotten these returned uh, just directly as a vector. 
with no naming. Mm -hmm. oh, actually, no, it does. Map will preserve the names of the list, the input to the output. So ah. that is one of the nice features of Map and, and apply and some of the other things. It's not going to destroy or it's going to preserve the information that exists. Um, exists I, there. I, I thought for some reason it would give me it back just as a vector. Uh, but it, either way, we could also get them returned if you, for some bizarre reason, wanted to turn the numbers into a character. Uh, map CHR will also give us a... Uh... It, this will throw an error. Oh, will it? Yes. I thought it would give it... Oh, in, it does. There it, is. it does. It gives for some reason, warning. I thought it yeah. erred. No, know, clearly, no. we didn't rehearse yeah. this one. Uh, yeah. It but, gives uh, it a warning. I, yes. It does give you the results. <laughs> yes. So <laughs> it is doing it for now. It sounds like automatic coercion from double to character was deprecated in 10000. So it will work for now. No, no, no uh, guarantees for how long it will continue to do coercion for you. Um, yeah. so it's better to be more explicit about this and, and do a, um, conversion. I don't actually, I don't know if you can pipe or do a, uh, testing. Oh, there you go. You can do that. So you, I don't uh, works, suggest yeah. you do the piping like this within a, a map. Cause that looks weird as I'll get out, but, uh, you can do that too. Apparently. I mean, Surprise. I guess you could, could you till the as dot character and wrap that around the mean maybe yeah i mean which that's... is functionally what's happening with the, the yeah exactly it's the same thing the, the but typing there it's just again looks... i don't know why anyone's changing mean values to characters but you could certainly do it if you wanted to um, um oh it's it's if it can't coerce it so if i wanted to do a like a a boolean uh, lo uh lgl yeah logic yeah so, so okay, yeah Basically, it has some type protection for you. And that's one of the nice thing about the map underscore star functions that exist is you can be assured that the output from that function will be a double, a logical, um, a character, whatever the map underscore star output is. Right. You can be nearly guaranteed that is the output type that you will get which is really convenient because when you're just calling map, um, it is going to return to you a list. The beauty of lists, it can contain whatever contents you want it to contain and doesn't have to be consistent between each index. And right. so there can be, you could have a function that sometimes returns, and, and this just exists in like the R universe. You can have a function that returns different things based on the inputs, uh, but like marginally different. Um, and so it can be really frustrating to write your code around those functions, expecting, oh, for the most part, I should be getting a uh, numeric value, a double out of it, right? Which, so double is the same as numeric. Mm. Um, but if for some reason the inputs don't match what you expect it to, and now that function's returning like a logical or something like that, your code mm. could fall over. Or it could still work, it could still run because R's types are very loosey-goosey. And then all of a sudden your downstream code starts giving out garbage because the input was supposed to be a double, but now it's a Boolean, but Booleans get converted into zeros and ones when you call as care or as numeric on them. And so they get coerced into zero and ones, not the actual values that you're wanting to do. And all of a sudden the world is topsy turvy and you don't know where you live. And uh, da, da. so, um, point is use the map underscore, whatever functions, your life becomes a lot easier. <laughs> Yeah, 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 no doubt. Uh, C A H R. There we go. There we go. And other things we can do again because we're in lists, um, you know, like we can get results returned like a table, and that's kind of cool. So, like, you could imagine if we had like a two by two table and we wanted to do different counting type of things, we could simply do that in here and get these cool lists out and call. Like, if we were maybe then only interested in dream, we could slap a dollar sign dream at the end of that. Um, and and get out I think it's a capital D and get out just that table. So a lot, lot of options. Um other stuff we can do, Ellis. Yeah, so we can also provide a list again because it is just map just returns us a list. It can continue to do whatever makes sense, or not not even what makes sense. It can do whatever we want it to do because it's a list. Yeah. Uh that gave me crazy eyes there for a second there. Uh 
but you can, yeah, on um, each of the elements of the uh, islands, you can call summary and get the summary information out of that if you want to store that somewhere else and then reference that later on in your code. You can do that relatively easily and just quickly go over all the different entries. Now, if you, again, like if you want to do what we did last week, you can again use map on the is this supposed to, is that supposed to be dot x? I think that's supposed to be dot x. It'll it'll work either way. Uh, I don't know why, but right, it does. Well, <laughs> uh, but yeah, we'll take dlist and map across all the different uh, islands to get a relationship between bill length and flipper length, um, and then we can call again. You can build them all up because map returns a list of the linear models that exist. Boop. So we can get all the linear models. Then we go, actually, now we want to call the summary of each of the functions or each of the linear models. And so again, we can get the outputs there. Or you could do something if you wanted to store all of it. You could do take do this map here. Um, well, actually, you could you would do uh, b -b 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 nest. Is it, is it nest? Let's let's say we're making a tibble, and then we'll just say the islands. Equals dot, and then you mutate the uh, model equals map. So we're going to map over islands on dot x, and then we're going to say model summary equals map of model. I think you guys spelled islands wrong. What what are islands? I don't know what islands. you're talking about. There we go. Clearly going rogue here. Um, yeah. But you can, you know, take the list, put it into a table. Then you, again, like we did last week, apply the linear model to each of the elements here. And then from that model, uh, we can then get the summary. So then we can get a nice table that's got both the data set, the model, and the summary of our linear model, all in a very nice, concise format because table and mapping. And this is why maps are so nice. Yeah. And then what we could do is if we wanted to get the p-value out of it, we can do mutate again, uh, model p-value, and then model p. And then we can do map double, a uh, model summary. summary. Yep. Is it p-value, p-dot-value? I think it's that, yeah, dot, yeah. Um, again, clearly going rogue here. Oh. Uh... Uh, oh, uh, uh, excuse yeah. me. It is. You need a comma. There you go. There we go. Yeah. No. Uh, Let's side quest here. That model summary. This go. Oh, it doesn't. Oh. Have a... No, yeah, it does, but it's called. Uh... Is it F statistic? No, that's not. No, that wouldn't be it. Uh, what is it called? Coefficient alias. I can't remember what how they call it in the. Just do like names on the this model summary. Yeah. Those are the. I swear, I, I don't know. Maybe you can't. I swear, I thought you could pull it up. Whatever. Uh, yeah. Let's just pull out the F statistic. Pull, pull out something else. Yeah. F stat. There you go. And then we're just going to pull out here. F statistic. I think stat uh, dot, is tick. F dot statistic. Yeah. F dot statistic. Yeah. I don't know. But you, hopefully well, folks... was well, well, it was called something. It was like F stat or something like that, wasn't it? Dollar sign, F statistic. Yeah, it is. Why is it not pulling it out? Map double. Should work. Results Length must one, be... not three. That's it's strange. Pulling, it's pulling one out for every. It's pulling yeah, we'll three just... because pulling one out for each of the 
There you go. Uh, cause you're, tr I think cause map double is trying to return it as a vector. And I guess it didn't know how to put it there. So now, yeah. now you could unnest dollar sign F stat. This go. Yeah. There you oh, go. Oh, because it has the, um, Oh, the it stuff. gives you more. Okay. So we so, just want the value. Yeah. If you want just the value, then it should there we work. Go. Clear and side quest. Double. No. <laughs> oh, I think it's this. There we go. Oh, there we we yeah. got there. Wow, that's pretty good. Okay, Sweet. that was a struggle. <laughs> that that see that happens sometimes. Yeah, but there anyway. you go. Going forward. Yeah, <laughs> I think I probably would have just done it with the map and then unnested it if I needed them. <laughs> oh well, clearly different brains. Anyway. Yeah, it's fine. Um, yeah, what else do we got? <laughs> All right, so what if we wanted to know which within each, because we were looking at islands, which one of these uh, are Adeli? What are the indices of Adeli? So you can say, okay, we're going to map over uh, dot .x, and every case where the species entry of that uh, data frame within that list are Adeli, return uh, true. And so obviously the Torgerson is all Adeli, like half of Dream are Adeli, and like a third of Bisco are Adeli. And again, you can write this in two different ways. So put the double square braces or the dollar sign because the contents of each of those lists are a data frame. And that's how you work with data frames. Uh, if you wanted to keep only the cases where Adeli's uh, exist in your data set, there's two different ways you can do that as well. Uh, you can use the keep function, which accepts a Boolean list uh or excuse me a boolean um and so we create this function here or this this uh uh condition here where it says for within every entry of d list return again the cases where species are a deli and return uh and keep that or if you wanted to then filter within each excuse me this would be keeping the entire uh island um, and then here you're doing it within each island to keep only the Adelis. So again, two different ways you can approach that, whether you do a, a list or a map. And so you can kind of like, again, build up your maps to then apply this and then do this and then do this and then do that and keep it all in the list from the beginning to the very end. You just now filter down to your various uh, contents here. Now, if we wanted to apply this to keep just the Eldelis and Torgerson, we apply that sort of function as well, where we do the keep, but then we use this pluck function. So pluck accepts either an index, so a one through n, with n being the number of entries in your list, or uh, the name of the uh, entry, name of the index in the list. And so this is kind of a nice way to write it. Otherwise, you'd have to write it like the like this, and Not it's weird and it feels perfect. strange, and I don't like it. <laughs> don't do it. It does work. It does work though. And and all, the other piece too is it doesn't continue to work in um, base R's piping as well, but this would. So if you're using that that sort of pipe, the the dot notation doesn't work. Yeah. But this so but this this function will work in both base R and this. So you should write it like this. Patrick, what are we doing in this last section here? Last section, we're going to pluck the Torgerson Island out just as we did above. And we're going to take that tibble and make a nice little plot with all of our standard GG plot stuff with flipper length and bill length. And we're going to color by a factor of the years so that they're actually discrete values and not seen as numerics. And then we're going to put a uh, linear, <clears throat> linear model line with confidence intervals onto the uh, plotting space and make it uh, theme classic so that there's no grid lines. And so um, basically we went from a list of data frames to extracting out just the data frame we wanted to then plotting the stuff that we needed to plot. And of course that line is 
the same as the uh, linear model line that we built when we built the linear model. So if we wanted to pull out those linear models, we could just extract those from above. Indeed. And with that, that was a very quick intro to um, to per and the different ways you can be using those map functions, how you can pluck out the, the values out of your list. Uh, hopefully that helps you understand some of the notation that you might have been seeing when people are using per or when you're writing your own uh, code and wanting to use per the different ways you can write it because there's not one necessarily one right way to do it it is what makes sense uh, i think i lean on trying to make it as clear as possible to future readers including myself because i may not actually understand what mindset i was in <laughs> in a year or two when i go to look at the code and try to understand what's going on here it's, or if you have a big code base and there's just a lot to remember um so per makes it really really easy to deal with those lists and get consistent outputs from them so with that Ooh. we're going to call episode 184 of tidy x hello kitty <laughs> uh, as always my name's ellis hughes you can find me on various social media sites at ellis underscore hughes and my name is Patrick Ward. You can find me on X at at OSP Patrick at tidy underscore explained is where the screencast lives on X as always easiest way to get in touch with us. YouTube channel questions, comments down below. We love to hear from you. If there's other stuff you want to see with map and per um, if you start playing with it and run into some, uh, you know, hiccups, uh, bottlenecks along the way, let us know. We're going to be working with per over the next few episodes. Other than that, uh, if you enjoy the show, you feel like it's contributing to your work and you'd like to donate to our work, we do have a Patreon page and we're thankful for anything that you'd like to donate. Thank you all so much and keep on exploring your world.